reading for them. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Let's start with the today's session. Before that, uh, do you have any doubt in the previous session? In a Docker or Git or anything? So this Saturday, Sunday, we will keep as a revision session, okay? So in that, I will share assignment for a Marvel and resolve doubt from git as well as marvin i think so i have given only git assignment marvin assignment is still pending so i will uh, provide git uh, i will provide marvin assignment as well as i will try to resolve uh, some queries from git as well as marvin okay this will be the Saturday Sunday scenario. Okay, session will be in the morning itself. I will take one and a half hour. Okay, meanwhile, do you have any doubt in the previous session regarding Docker? Okay, let's start with the today's session. Let me share my screen. Are you able to see my screen? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yes, so ma'am. Let's create one more Docker file so that I can clearly differentiate you between CMD and entry point. Okay. Uh, like I have explained the all theoretical part in yesterday's session. You can go through the recordings. So let's try actually all the command in the real time. Okay. So yesterday we have created uh, one Docker file for Nginx server. 
uh, it was working fine. So today we will create one more file, okay? So how we can create a Docker file? Uh, so before that, always remember, you have to create folder and you have to keep your Docker file in that folder only, okay? So whatever required files are there, you have to keep all required files along with the Docker file in a single folder, okay? So that it will be very easy to create image. Always remember, before creating image, you have to create folder, okay? So I will give name as a first, okay? So this is my folder. Let's enter into this folder, okay? So we have entered into this folder. Now, first of all, uh, so whatever folders, files, data, uh, whatever things required to create image, you have to keep in this same folder only. All the required stuff you have to keep in this folder only. Okay. And the same your Docker file will also reside in the same folder. That means all the data required will be kept in a single folder before creating an image. Okay. Now, first thing we want to do is that write a Docker file. Have you understood the naming convention for a Docker file? See, always remember Docker file name is a fixed and should be written in this format only. D capital remaining all letters should be small. This is a fixed format. Okay, name is also fixed and then uh, this case sensitivity also fixed. First letter should be capital, remaining all should be small case. This is a format to write your Docker file. Okay, so this is the Docker file which I opened with the nano editor. Now let me write the content into this file. So what content we have to write in a nano file? So first of all, we have to uh, Docker file. First of all, we have to take the base image. Okay, so what instruction we are using from then maintainer. Okay, then label. Main instructions are there. I will not uh, write all. Okay. I will write label and from. Okay. Now from what we are writing in this instruction from instruction. So here we have to use some base image. I told uh, yesterday itself what are the commands are there in the Docker file we have to use. So in that the first instruction is a from. So with this from instruction we have to provide some base image. Okay. Now, what is the base image? So, it is a pre-built image that will be available in your Docker Hub registry. Okay. So, what are the examples of a pre-built uh, pre images? You can take uh, Ubuntu as one example. Tomcat is one example. Nginx is one example. Like that, we have many pre-built images. That means someone already built image for these things and they kept in a Docker Hub registry. So, to perform your task, what we have to do? We have to take base image from your Docker Hub registry. So, the base image will be maintained or it will be mentioned with the help of from command. This will be called as a command or instruction. So, here from, I will write as a image. Okay. Now, here I will take one small image that is an alpine. Okay. What is alpine? Let me explain you. Docker Hub Alpine. Okay. So what is this Alpine? We can say Alpine is a dockerized version of a Alpine Linux. Okay. It's a dockerized version of Alpine Linux. Um, it is a Linux distribution and it is a very lightweight and more secure. Okay. Similar, uh, similar to your Ubuntu. Uh, then you are uh, sent OS like that, uh, like your Red Hat Linux like that. We have one Alpine. It is also Linux based. Uh, it is also OS. Okay. This Alpine is a OS and size of this OS is a 5 MB. Okay. Here they have created one image for this OS. It is a similar to Ubuntu, but it is a very lightweight and it is a very secure. So many people will prefer this Alpine as a base image. Why? Because it is a lightweight, it is a secure and it is a Linux distribution, which is a similar to your Ubuntu, Red Hat Linux, uh, okay, Debian. So it is similar to all other Linux distribution. Okay, this is also operating system. We can say OS, but it is a very lightweight. It is a Linux based OS, Linux based distribution and it is a lightweight and secure. Okay, so 
we can choose this instead of a going with the Ubuntu. Okay. So let me go here. I have taken base image as the Alpine. This is also an OER. Okay. Next up, what we have to specify? We have to specify label. Label is a nothing but the author or the maintainer who is creating this Docker file. So I will write my name as I'm creating this file. Okay. You can write anyone's name with the Gmail address. You can specify. Okay. So why this label or maintainer is important? Why? Because in further future, any error occurred. Uh, so to resolve that or to get more information about that error, we can contact the person who have created this Docker file. So here I will specify the name of a person who have created this Docker file as a maintainer or the label. Okay. Next up, I will write the instruction. Now to specify instruction, we have a three commands cmd is a command then entry point entry point and <clears throat> run okay if you remember yesterday's session there are three uh, three commands we can use to specify instruction that means what task we have to perform in this image that task we can specify with the help of these three instructions now what is the difference between these three instructions so basically we have seen run okay uh, in the run we can specify those instructions that we required uh, while wait a while guys okay I think so. Someone have uh, is this Shankar? Have you joined the session? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just a second, just a second. Sorry. Yeah. So you become host now. So give me the access. <clears throat> Yeah, you can share the screen and continue. Yeah, so now you can see. Okay, uh, so you can see now. Uh, we have a three ways to specify our instruction run cmd and entry point so we need to see what is the difference between this each and every instruction so if you see run so here we can specify instruction uh, that instruction require at the time of uh, image creation for example if we want to create a tomcat image okay so to create tomcat image we require ubuntu as a base image am i right ubuntu or the alpine as a base image and then we have to specify some instruction to install your Tomcat on that base image. Instructions like apt update, we can say, okay, that example we have seen in the yesterday's scenario, am I right? So apt update or we can say uh, apt install, okay. So this type of instruction we can specify with the help of this run command, okay. So the instruction which we require at the time of image creation that we can specify with the help of this run command. Okay. Next, uh, we have a CMD. Okay. CMD. So default command to run that container, we can specify with the help of CMD. Okay. Whatever default, default commands are there to run that container, we can specify with the help of CMD. And next, uh, we have an entry point. Okay. So entry point is the first command or first instruction that will be executed when the container started. Okay. So here entry point will be the default one. Okay. So whatever you specify at any point, you specify entry point. 
the execution will always start from the entry point instruction. Okay, whatever instruction you have specified along with this entry point, the first instruction will be executed here only. Okay, now how many command or how many entry points we can specify in a single Docker file? So we can specify as many as run command, we can specify as many as CMD. But the main important thing is that even though if you specify for CMD, the last one will be only considered, remaining two will be ignored. In a single Docker file, you can you can able to execute only one CMD. Okay. Even though you specify one, two, three CMD instructions, the last instruction will be only executed. Okay. And next we have an entry point. Entry point is a single instruction we can specify. And whenever the container started, whatever instruction you have specified along with this entry point, that will be the first instruction executed in your container. Okay. So let me go with the example so that you can understand better what I will do, you know. First of all, I will remove entry point and then CMD. Okay. So let's go with the CMD. So what I will do, I will specify simple command to print hello world. Okay. So how we can write here, we have to specify the argument. So echo to print the instructions that means whatever operation we want to perform that we can specify here okay next uh, here we can specify some message that we want to print okay so hello i will specify and then control x to save the file control y and then we came out okay if you see now the docker file is ready okay let me show you Okay, so this is the content of the my Docker file. This is the base image, the maintainer, the label, and then CMD instruction. Let's create the image from this, uh, from this Docker file. Okay, so to create image, we have a simple instruction called as the build. Okay, so how we can specify build command? So we have to write sudo Docker build and then hyphen t for a tag or name of the image which we want to give. So here I will give simple name as a my image, okay? My image. This is a simple name I want to give. And then we have to specify the dot. So what this dot indicate that for the current folder I have to create or I want to create the image, okay? So this is a period symbol which indicate your current folder. So whatever content is there in this current folder, so current folder is the first, am I right? In the first folder, I have created one Docker file. So whatever files or whatever content available in this folder, for all the files, I have to create the image, okay? So this dot indicate your current folder, okay? So let's enter. So you can see, okay, label must require two arguments. Let me make it as a maintainer. Okay. Instead of label, I will make it as a maintainer. Okay. Okay. So maintainer will be the person who will manage this file. Again, we need to build the image. Okay, so now let's check how many images or whether the image is created or not. How we can check all images in our system? Anyone? Sodo Docker images. Okay. So this way to check our images. You can see now, I have so many images, but uh, what was the image name? My image. Am I right? This is the one. Okay. My image, which is recently created. These are the old one, which are all still available. Let it be. So my image is the latest one, which we have created. This is the tag. Okay. This is the tag. So here uh, we can specify either a version or some uh, 
here usually the version will be specified with the help of a tag if not specified by default it will be considered as a latest okay i have not specified any version so this is the default one latest okay now let's uh, create the container from this image okay so how we can create the container so docker run okay then what we have to specify image name correct so image name is a my image so hello you can see the output which have specified in the command instruction is printed here are you able to see this output so we can say the container is someone uh, just give me a guys someone is waiting someone is there in the waiting room let me allow them okay so this is the output you can see now let me modify the same docker file again so so i will add one more pmd okay here and i will print something else here so echo and then some method okay hello how are you okay so same type of instruction i have written so first instruction is printing hello and second instruction is printing how are you am i right so let's save the file what i have what i have modified here can you able to see i have written two instructions here okay two, uh, both are starting with the cmd okay one is printing hello another one is printing how are you now with the help of explanation can you able to tell me what will be the output if i have given two instructions here what will be the output if i run this container what i told you whatever number of command you write in your docker file the last one will only execute am i right the last one will only execute so among these two even though if i specify one more let me specify one more now tell me what will be the output if i execute this container whatever number whatever number of uh, instruction you can specify but the last one will only execute okay let's execute the file control x to save the file okay uh, whenever you are modifying docker file again you have to build the image okay so i will use the same instruction to rebuild the image okay same uh, same uh, same instruction i am using to rebuild the image okay so whenever any time whenever you modify your docker file again rebuild the image okay so the image name is same so i will execute <clears throat> sudo docker re, uh, docker run and my image now you see so i am good for the latest one okay i am good for the latest one so that is the output you can see now whatever number of command with the cmd you can specify but the last one will be default and it will be uh, only printed okay it will be only considered so if you see the your docker file if you see your docker file see how many commands i have a 1 2 3 but only last one is considered these two are ignored okay only last one will be considered okay now let me tell you one more point again so let me run the container again and i will pass some argument from command line okay i will pass some argument from command line so here see this is the way to run container but here only i will pass some argument okay so echo and uh, let's try me okay try me try me okay so one more argument i have passed from the command line see already i have a three cmd instructions here among that whenever you are running the container the last one will only considered but now what i am doing you know the same docker file 
uh, while running the container, I have passed one more argument through command line. This is the command line, am I right? So to, through command line, I have passed one more argument. And let's enter. Now see. So all these uh, instructions are overwritten. Okay, all these instructions are overwritten and only the command line argument is considered. Okay, only command line arguments are considered. So all these instructions are overwritten by this command line argument. So only command line argument is printed. You can see here, try me. Sorry, you can see here, try me. So whatever parameters or argument you have passed through command lines, that parameters or arguments are the considered here. Okay. So how I can specify the default instruction here? So to specify default instruction, we can use entry point. We can use entry point. Okay. So what we will do, you know, we will modify CMD with the entry point. Okay. Understood here, everyone? So let me modify our Docker file again. Okay. And here, now I will keep this PMD as it is. Along with this, what I will do, I will write entry point instruction. Okay. So what I told you at whatever location or at whatever line you specify entry point, the execution will always start from this position. Okay. The execution will always start from this position. So entry point and I will specify uh instruction here okay i will specify eco only okay. <clears throat> and i will write some message here wait guys someone is there in a waiting room let me allow some people are in the waiting room Okay, fine. So, entry point. Here I will specify some instructions. So, let me write some message here for entry point. I will write something like uh, good morning. Okay. Good morning. Fine. So, this is the message I have written here as a good morning. Okay. Let me save this file enter okay so now whenever you are modifying docker file what we have to do we have to rebuild the image so let me write the instruction sudo docker build hyphen t and then name okay i will give same name as the my image What happened? Dot we have to specify current folder. Okay. So image created. Now we have to run the instruction. Okay. So what will be the output? Can anyone help me? <coughs> Can anyone help me to get the output? What will be the output? Hmm. Let me show you first of all Docker file and just try to sort out the output okay yeah now with this what will be the output can anyone help me here good morning, good morning will be the output sorry good morning will be the output good morning will be the output only good morning and what about these three commands we have written here what will happen to this uh, last one uh, i am good so uh, how many output will be there or what will be the output total output tell me four total output what will be the good morning and i am good am i right yes yeah and how about sequence first it will print i am good or first it will print i uh, good morning first uh, good morning correct okay let me run the container we will check again okay So sudo docker run and image name is the my image. Am I right? Yeah. 
echo not found what we made is this here hmm can anyone help me to get a uh, fix error what mistake we made check the file it's clear only so see between these two argument i have specified comma here am i right how about this entry point is there any comma so it is not able to identify what is this echo okay so let me specify comma and again save the file again rebuild the image why because we have modified our docker file okay now run See, good morning and I am good. Okay, good morning and I am good. Now let me pass some argument through command line. Okay, so what I, argument I will pass here? Echo and uh, some message. Dwiti uh, technology. Okay. Dwiti technologies. Okay. Now what will be the output? So what I told you, if we specified CMD, uh, uh, if we specified instruction in a CMD, then that instruction will be overwriting with this command line argument. But if you want a default instruction to execute, we can specify entry point. Okay. So let's do the enter. You can see now, uh, good morning is as it is. Why? Because uh, entry point will not, uh, not allow to overwrite the things. Entry point will not allow to override the thing. That's the reason good morning is as it is. And then the echo I am good was the command which we have specified in a uh, CMD. Okay. That command is overwritten with the help of Dwiti technologies. That is overwritten with the help of Dwiti technologies. Understood everyone? Yes ma'am. Yeah. So entry point we can specify for the default argument whereas uh, uh, what... If we specify an instruction as CMD, uh, that the instruction can be override with the command line arguments. Okay. That is the main difference between CMD and the entry point. Okay. Now let's take one more example. To execute the var file or the jar file. Okay. Let's take one more example, guys. Okay. So what we will do, you know, we will take one other example for installing curl and vim uh, in Alpine image. Okay. So that will be the simple example we will take. Let me come out of this folder and create one more folder. Now the same folder we want to create a Docker file. So nano editor I will use here. Now what we have to do, we have to take some base image. Okay. So I will take base image. Now we will take a run a command example. Okay. So uh, one example we have taken with the CMD and entry point. We will take one more example with a run. Okay. So file so from from we will take here alpine image okay alpine and i will specify the version 3.4 as the tag name then run okay now i want to install curl and vim okay i want to install curl and vim uh, on this alpine image as the alpine image is the lightweight image it doesn't have this default uh, uh, default editor okay so uh, to install vim and curl what we need we have to do we have to specify some instructions okay so run i will first of all update the base image repository with the help of apk package manager apk and update the next run 
ABK and uh, I will specify add bin to add bin editor and then run APK add and then curl. Okay. Okay, so control X to save the file. These are the very simple instruction, guys. You can see uh, uh see this. So this image as a uh, alpine image, I have taken as a base image. Okay. So whenever I am specifying this uh, base image name with the uh, with the help of from command, what it will do, it will go to your Docker Hub registry and it will pull that image. And then after that, we can say this is a pre-built image, okay? Pre-built image. And from this pre-built image, we have to create our customized image, okay? We have to create our customized image. So in my customized image, I want this Vim and the curl. So as Alpine is a very small Linux distribution, it doesn't have this Vim editor as well as it doesn't have a curl command, okay? So we need to install these two things uh, in this base image, okay? This is a base image. On, on this base image, we have to do this modification. So after this modification, it will become a customized image, okay? As per our choice, okay? So I have specified some instructions here with the help of run command. What this run command? We can say, at the time of image creation, whatever command uh, we have to specify with the help of shell or bash, that command we can write here. Okay. So let me save this file. Okay. Let me. Yeah. So now, next, what we have to do? We have created file. What we can do now? We can build a customized image. Okay. So we know how to build command sudo docker file and then sorry sudo docker then build okay hyphen t and then now what I will do you know up uh, uh, when I create this customized image I want to upload this image on my uh, docker hub repository okay so let's uh, see that things later first of all we will see the simple basic things let me keep this as it is name i will give as the install and this dot you can see second line, third, and this four. All instructions are executed successfully and it is exported as exported as an image. Okay. Let me check the image. To do docker. And then what we have to do? We have to check the images. So you can see the install image got created. Okay. You can see here. Let me run this image. And then name of the image. Okay, to do Docker run and then name of the image. So now you can see the container is created. How we can check container? Anyone? How we can check running container? To do Docker. Yeah. So this is an old container I think so which is running here. So let me check hyphen A. Okay. So hyphen A will show you running as well as stopped container also. Okay. Whatever container already executed or it is stopped, that all container we can check with the help of sudo docker ps and hyphen A. Hyphen A will show you all the containers, okay, which are uh, uh, up and which are exited. So you can see one um, only one container is up here. You can see now and remaining all are exi exited. Okay. So if you see installed, yeah, this is our container. Okay. So uh, just don't consider this time because this machine is not synchronized properly. So time you just ignore. Okay. So you can see now exited 
and uh, this is the name of the container okay so let me enter into this container how we can enter we can open this container in an interactive mode with the help of some flags okay so let me open that container with the interactive mode to check whether uh, vim and then curl is installed or not okay so what we will do you know first of all we will run the container in interactive mode how we can which flags we can uh, use to run container in interactive mode can anyone help me i can i correct sudo docker run hyphen i then for I interactive mode hyphen t for terminal and hyphen d for detached mode that is in the background okay the container will be keep running in the background okay and then we have to specify name of a image name of the image is the install okay can we pay, uh, provide some name to this container is it possible so if you see carefully some random name was generating for each and every container so can we specify some name for our container yes that option is also possible. So we have to use hyphen hyphen name flag and then we have to provide some name to that container. Okay. So I will give name as a my container. Okay. So this is the name which I have given. So my container is the name of the container. Some random, if you are not specifying any name to that container, some random name is getting generated. Okay. Instead of that, I want to give some uh, proper name to this container. That's the reason I have specified this flag, hyphen hyphen name. Okay. And then some uh, name you have to provide to that container. And this is an image. Okay. Don't get confused. Okay. So image name we can view at the time of a build. Whereas container name we can give at the time of run. Remember these things, okay? Image name we can give at the time of build. Whereas container name we can give at the time of run. Okay, don't get confused between these two. This is an image name, okay? And this will be the container name, okay? So let me execute this container. You can see some random hash digest is generated. This is nothing but your container ID. Okay. This is nothing but your container ID. Now let me check all containers again. Sudo docker here. Okay. You can see now two containers are running. Earlier it was only one, but now two containers are running. And how you can check with the help of image name. Okay. And the container name. Okay. So what is the image name? See, this is an message digest. This is your container ID. You can see here. Okay. Uh, this is a container ID. This is the name of the image from which the container is created. Okay. Then uh, actually we have modified name. Uh, if you are not specifying any name, some random name will be generated. But you can specify any name of your choice. Okay. Sorry. So you can see now my container name is the, this one. Okay. So like that you can change any container name also. Now what we have to do? Let me enter into this container. This container is up and running. Okay. So we can open this container now. So sudo docker exec that is execute. Okay. Hyphen id interactive. Don't specify hyphen d here. No need to specify because we are not with the detached mode. Okay. We are not running container in the detached mode. We want to access the terminal of this container. That's the reason we are specifying EXCC and then name of the container or ID of the container. Okay. Anything you can specify here. What I will specify, you know, I will specify name of the container because I know name. Paste and then we have to specify some terminal. Okay, so bash terminal I will specify to interact with this container. Okay, sh. Okay, so you can see check the bash here. It is sh. So I will copy the same one. Okay. 
So you can see now this is your container. You can see the root directory is open for that container. Now you can see ls. Okay. Now you can see uh, you can try vim access. Okay. So let me vim and some file name. Okay. You can see now Vim editor is working here with this Alpine image. By default, Alpine image doesn't have Vim editor, but we have installed successfully. You can see this is this is an Vim editor. Okay, those who have worked learning Linux, they might know this is an Vim editor. Okay, how we can exit from Vim editor? We have to press Escape, then colon, and then W to come out of this Vim editor to save file and come out of this Vim editor. You can check whether the file is created or not. Let me do the ls and you can see the file is created. That means uh, Vim Editor is successfully uh, installed and it is working fine. Okay, it is working fine. Let me check uh, curl command also. Okay, so what I will do, you know, curl localhost I will do. So I will call localhost. Okay, connection details it is saying. Let me try something else. Local code eighty. Okay, some network issue might be. Uh, let me try with the finger whether it is actually working or not. Let me give some website. Let me give the same same website now. Docker up. So you can see curl command is also working successfully. By default, this curl and view won't be available, but we have installed these two things successfully on this base image, alpine base image. Okay. You can see now this curl command is also executing successfully. This is a script, okay, web page script. So this is an HTML code, so you may not able to read, but this uh, is working successfully. Curl command is also working successfully. Okay, how we can come out of this container? Can anyone guide me? So to come out of this container, we have to type exit. Okay, so you can see this is my system, Ubuntu. Okay, understood now up till now. Any doubt? Anyone have any doubt in this run uh, cur, uh, run command and entry point command? Run entry point and CMD. Have you understood successfully when we have to use each and every command? Is this clear to everyone? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, fine. So we will move to the next topic. So let's uh, let's try with our example, okay? So, uh, if you have attended previous session, do you remember that we have uploaded var file on the server? Do you remember this thing? We have uploaded var file on the server, on the Tomcat server. So, what steps we have followed? Can anyone tell me? So, that for that all step, we will create a Docker file. Dviti Raj, Sushmita, do you remember the things? So, let me write down here somewhere, okay? Yeah. 
Do you remember what steps we have followed? Uh, I mean, Tom deploying the war file. Right, right. When we have deployed war file in the Tomcat server, do you remember? Yeah. Yeah. First of all, where will be the source code available? Can anyone help me? All source code where it will be available? Uh, in war file. Man. All source code. We have created var file. So first of all, see the flow. Okay. Try to understand the flow. Okay. So a uh, developer, whenever he will develop the code, what it will he will do? He will push to. He will push into GitHub. Correct. He will put into the GitHub registry. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Then how we can generate the artifact for the whole source code? How we can generate a uh, artifact? How we can build the project? Is there any tool do you remember to build that project? Uh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So, it's a build tool. Correct. So, uh, for that source code, what we will do? Uh, we will generate an artifact. Okay. So, to generate an artifact, we will use Marvin as a build tool. Now, in which way we can generate the artifact? What will be the extension? It can be a jar file it can be a var file or it can be a ER file. we are talking about java based application okay right now yes. yes yeah so do you remember this var file we can deploy on server okay so for that we have a chosen tomcat server do you remember these things we have seen in the earlier sessions yes, those who have attended that might remember Okay, so how we have deployed, there are two ways to deploy war file on a Tomcat server. One, with the help of? Uh, GUI. GUI, do you remember? Yes, ma'am. Import file and click on the deploy button. Yes. Tomcat GUI. Tomcat, uh, we will open the Tomcat page and in the Tomcat page, we will select file, we will upload the file and then we will click on the deploy with yes. the help of GUI. And what is the other way? Copy paste var file into the, which folder? Deploy. Web app folder. Web folder, yeah. Correct? Okay. So these, will th these things, these are the steps we will do to deploy your application into the Tomcat server. Am I right? Now here what we will do, you know, we will take a source code from the GitHub registry and the same source code will have a your var file. Okay, why? Because if it is a web app, a web based application, it will contain var file. Do you remember form.xml file in the Marvin? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So consider the web uh, in the GitHub registry already var file is available. Now what we have to do, we have to fetch this var file from the GitHub registry. Okay, then uh, fetch this var file with the help of clone command. Okay, with the help of clone command, we have to fetch the var file. Then we have to take one Tomcat image. Now what we will do, you know, Instead of installing Tomcat on your system, what we will do directly, we will take the Tomcat image. Okay. So if you take Tomcat image, no need to install it on your local system. Why? Because this Tomcat, it is a pre-built image and it is already available onto the Docker Hub registry. So with the help of from command, we will directly take this Tomcat image. Okay. So, it will avoid burden of installing, tom, downloading Tomcat and installing Tomcat on your system. We will directly take the Tomcat image. Next, what we have to do? We got the Tomcat image. Now, in this Tomcat image, there will be web apps folder. Okay, there will be web apps folder. Am I right? So, in this web apps folder, we have to move this var file. Am I right? To deploy this var file on this Tomcat, what we have to do? We have to move our var file into this web app folder. Okay, where this web app folder is remaining, uh, uh, residing? This web app folder is residing in this Tomcat image. Okay, Tomcat image file system. Okay, this is a image. And in this image file system, there will be a web app folder. 
So what we have to do, we have to copy this var file from our system to this web app, web app folder. And this web app folder is residing into this image, Tomcat image file system. Am I right? Are you understanding? See, until and unless you are not understanding the flow, there is no use of, use of writing some commands unnecessary. Try to understand the flow. Okay. So what we are doing here, you see carefully guys. Okay. So var file will be available on the uh, GitHub, GitHub repository. Okay. From the repository, we will take the var file. And to deploy var file on the Tomcat server, what we will do, we will take the base image as a Tomcat from the Docker Hub registry. And then what we will do in this Docker Hub registry, uh, in this Tomcat image, we will have a web apps folder. Okay. What will be the web apps folder location here? It will be available in user, local and Tomcat folder. Okay. The default location for this web app is the user user then local sorry local and then tomcat okay this will be the default location for the web app folder okay so this folder will be available in this tomcat image so we have to just copy paste from this our system to this web apps okay and then we have to run the tomcat so to run the Tomcat, we have to run the Tomcat script. So how we can run the Tomcat script? We have a Catalina.sh. Okay. Catalina.sh. To run that Tomcat script, we have to execute this command. Catalina.sh. And then run. Okay. This command will be used to run your Tomcat server. Okay. Let's create a Docker file, guys. First of all, we need var file okay so let's get a var file from your github registry okay so let me create one folder here and i will give name to that folder as a web app okay so let's enter to this folder okay now you can see this folder is empty let me clone the repository from my github so yeah, if you see in the target folder, we have a, you can see here, we have already var file. Uh, are you able to see this GitHub repository? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Ma'am, it is so the same, uh, same link you have provided. Same Correct. Same one on which we have already worked. Okay. Same one. So if you see here. So if, you, if uh, I want to clone the var file, then I have to type the same url link yeah okay. so see already we have a uh, yeah the cloning is easy but already we have a if you see we have a target folder and in the target folder we already uploaded var file with the help of marvin tool okay. do you yes. remember are you able to see this var file yes 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 so this is an artifact of your project now what we will do we will move this artifact artifact from our system this will be available in our system we will move this from our system to your image registry, okay, in your container, okay. So, what we will do now, we will first of all clone this project, okay. First of all, we will clone this project. Now, Dvitiraj will help me to clone this project, okay. So, how we can clone, which URL we required? This one, am I right? Yes. Yeah. So what I will do, which command we are using for cloning purpose? Git clone. Git clone, correct. Git clone. And then URL you need to specify. Okay. So github.com, then this is the URL where actually your var file is residing. Let me enter. Okay. So let me check whether the I got all files or folders or not. Yeah, so th this is a folder which we got from our, uh, which we got in our system. You can see earlier it was an empty. This web app folder was empty. Okay. Now uh, I have cloned this uh, project from GitHub repository to my system. Now on my system, I have this project. Let me enter into this project. 
Okay. So let me do the error. Now, where is that var file? Let me check the position of this var file. Where it is? So in the target folder, in the target folder, we have a var file. See, deploy hyphen var dot var. This is the var file, okay, for our project, okay. This is the whole project. Am I right? So this is the var file which we have available here. Now, next, what we will do, you know, let's come out of this folder. And what we will do, you know, we will write a Docker file. Okay. So, nano. Docker file. Nano Docker file. Okay. Now, what we have to do? First of all, we have to take some base image. Now, what I'm telling you, you know, instead of installing Tomcat on our system, what we will do? We will take Tomcat as our base image. Okay. We will take Tomcat as our base image. So, how we can take base image? With the help of from command. Now, let's go to the Docker Hub registry and search for a Tomcat. Sorry. Search for a Tomcat. Okay. So this I want to check version of the Tomcat. That's the reason I I want to check the proper name or version of this Tomcat image. That's the reason I will cross verify here and uh, from here I will select. So you can see this is a Docker official image. So yeah, uh, version is not specified. We can simply pull it as a uh, Tomcat. Okay. So you can use simply Tomcat, no need to specify version also. Simply write Tomcat itself, okay? So let me go back to the EC2 instance and from Tomcat. So just for cross verification, I went there, okay? Image name, uh, base image name, uh, I want to check or cross verify. That's the reason I went to this Docker Hub registry, okay? Now next, what we have to do? We have to copy the var file from our system to the web app folder. Okay. So we will use copy command. As I told you, copy command contains two arguments, source and the destination. Okay. So what we have to specify in the source and what we have to specify in the destination. Can anyone help me in that? Can anyone help me in that? So source. So source, where actually var file is residing? In the target folder. Am I right? Target folder, we have a var file. Okay. So I will write var file name deploy hyphen var. I think so. Dot var. Oh, this is the var file name. We will cross verify once again. Don't worry. So this is the location for the var file. If you don't remember var file name, Simply you can put as a asterisk mark here, okay? You can put as the asterisk marks, okay? So what this asterisk mark represent? All files with this var extension. But right now we remember the name. That's why I will write name as name as it is. Deploy happen var dot var, okay? And what about destination? Now we are copying this file from our system to the container. So, what is the default location of a web app folder in the container? So, let me check the official image. Okay. So, in the official image, you will get the default folder location. Yeah, you can see. And this is the default folder location. User, local and then Tomcat. Okay. This is the default location. You can upload your var file at this location. Okay. User, local and then Tomcat. And under this Tomcat, we will have a, our web apps folder. Okay. So let me select this and then copy. Okay. So here, paste. And then under this, we will have a, our web apps folder. Okay. In this web apps folder, we have to copy this file. Okay. 
So after this, what we have to do next? Uh, we have to specify the port number. I told you for every container, there will be a port number. Okay. So here I will specify default port number for the Tomcat server. We can check on this official image. You can check the default port number is 8080. Let's see here. The default port number is the 8080. Okay, we will keep the same here also. So let me go here and then how we can specify the port number with the expose command. Okay, so 8080. Fine. So this is the port number and next we have to run this Tomcat file. Okay, so entry point and then Tomcat script and then we have to run this Tomcat script. That's the reason we have to press by run. Okay. Catlin dot sh. How we can cross verify these things again on the official Tomcat? You can you official Tomcat page, you will get all the details. You can see here. Not here. Go up. Yeah, this command. Okay. To run the default Tomcat server, we have to use this command. So either you can use CMD or you can use entry point. I will use entry point, okay? Because this is a default one. You can see here, okay? To run the Tomcat server. Got it? So here I have specified the command, okay? And then save the file. And then create an image. Okay, let's create image first of all. So let me check first of all var file whether it is available in the target folder. So in the target folder, cd target deploy hyphen var dot var. Okay. Let me copy once again. Let me paste it here. Okay. Deploy var dot var. Okay. Save file. And then build the image. So sudo docker. How we can build? Who will help me? Sudo docker build and hyphen t name of the image. What will be the name of the image? Project one, I will give. Okay. Project one. And then dot for the current folder. You can see the image is getting created. Okay, image is created. Okay. Now then we have to run the container. Okay, image is created. How we can check sudo docker image. You can see project one image is created. Okay. Image is created. Now let's run the container. So how we can run sudo docker run. Then what we have to specify hyphen itd. Okay. To run that container in the background and interactive mode. And then we have to specify port. Why? Because 8080 is already occupied by some other application on my system. So I have to give my host port. Okay. To check that application or to check that to run that container on my hostless system, I have to provide some other host number. Okay. So here I have to specify my host port. So host port I will specify 8000. Okay. This will be my host ports. Okay. To check the application on my system, we have to do the port mapping. Okay. And this port mapping will be done with the help of hyphen P flag. And the first, uh, this 8000 will be my host system port. And then we have to specify container port. Okay, so container port is by default 8080. And 8000 will be my post port. Okay, 
and then we have to specify image name image name what is the image name project one until now is there any doubt is there any doubt guys let me run container created right? let me check the container sudo docker and then peer okay where is it okay container exited also let me check once again Uh, guys, actually, due to power issues, uh, uh, ma'am, uh, we not able to continue. And uh, I also just want to tell, actually, uh, like for the free sessions or anything, uh, you can join uh, the further batches. This is for the uh, who all are uh, registered for the things. Okay, we'll let you know how the things work. Uh, and we are thinking to have nominal itself, uh, complete end to end support. But as of, am I audible to everyone over the back? Uh, yes, Ankur, yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, yes. So, yeah. So, I, can I continue? Actually, I don't know till what point. If you are okay, I'll try to continue. I do have Linux server. Uh, I don't know uh, to what point he has told, but uh, almost or else uh, let me uh, no need to worry or else uh, tomorrow she will continue. But I just want to inform you can fill those forms and uh, as of now only Linux was given. Okay, you can join that Linux batch, but uh, DevOps this is you can I'll try to send one form. Okay, just a second. Uh, you can give your mail IDs, uh, just a second. Hello. Yeah. Uh, like, do we have any recording provided uh, in the group? Because 
I haven't joined the uh, entire session. I have joined in the middle of the session because I have joined this group today itself only in the afternoon. Yeah, but for the you can fill those form. Uh, to be clear, actually, for the registered candidates, end to end like uh, interviews, guidance, and whenever they have the uh, have doubt on Saturday, Sundays, we are thinking to have the only doubt sessions and many other things. Uh, so this course we are thinking to plan for four months on rough note. So uh, all the recordings or running notes or mock interviews or guidance end to end we are giving. But uh, for the for the people who have not registered, uh, uh, we are thinking to plan pre uh, DevOps sessions after some time. I don't know when we will launch. But as of now. Uh, it is an on ongoing batch actually. So some of the things were already completed. And uh, we are thinking to have a nominal fee as well even. Uh, you can get in touch with admin. Or you can ping me on personal note. Uh, this is my number. I, if I, I, I might not pick the calls of everyone. But you can text me over the chat. You can fill that form. And uh, yeah, this is purely job oriented, guys. Like assignments will be given, and who are all interested, they can go ahead. Or if you want only free sessions or everything, it will take some time. As of now, Linux was going on. You can join that if you have yeah, any. I joined in Linux uh, session also, and also currently I'm a working professional. Uh, I'm I'm thinking that I'm also planning to shift to DevOps. Uh, like uh, I'm working only some of the tools and mon monitoring tools like CheckMK, uh, that much of tools. Uh, but I have knowledge on AWS, but uh, uh, I'm also like 